Hey everybody, this is the Reddit request of too long didn't read on how to improve your soldering iron, soldering iron. Number one, this is a 60 watt soldering iron, soldering iron, however you want to say it. This is a four gauge piece of copper that's bought from Home Depot. You buy it in rods, it's about a dollar. All you want to do is cut yourself off a piece that is long enough to fit in the shaft. So, fits in the shaft all the way down. Make sure it goes all the way down so you can get as much heat as you want. Shaft. You're going to cut off the tip. Use a file. Use a file. File it down. Just rub it across. File it down. File it down. File it down. Till you get a point. Or you can get a flat spade. Or you can get basically whatever type of tip you want. You can hammer down if you want. And that works very well. Once you have that, stick it in your soldering iron. Stick it in. Stick it in, tighten it down, turn it on, turn on your iron. Once you're turned on, you're going to dip it with some solder so that you end up with, you dip it with solder so you end up with a nice shiny tip that keeps oxidation off and that helps you, uh, helps make soldering so much easier. The second tip for it, you're going to go out to Home Depot again and you're going to buy yourself a rheostat. Uh, it's also known as a dimmer. It costs about four to five dollars. Very, very easy to plug in. It has three wires. There's a green wire and two black wires. Take yourself a very old power strip, cut off the cable. You're going to take the two white wires and you're going to wire them together. Um, just use a cap, twist it on. Take one black wire, or I'm sorry, you wire the black wire on the cable to the black wire on the rheostat. You just twist it together. Take one black wire, wire it to the other black wire. So basically you have an input and an output, okay? Rheostat controls how much it goes through. All right, so think of it like a little water valve. Very easy there. Your greens are all going to go together, so they're a little bit thicker, and you end up with three. So there are three of them here. Twist them together, tape it off. So to conclude, one dollar will buy you one rod. A 30 watt takes a six gauge wire, um, six gauge, and a 60 watt takes a four gauge. Okay, save you the trouble there. Most of them. Uh, the bigger ones are 4 gauge, these are 6, so 6 gauge. Cut it off about 4 inches, that means these things cost about a quarter a piece. Sand it down, grind it down, however you want to do it. Plug it in, tend the tip, you have to tend the tip. While you're there, pick up your dimmer. Wire your dimmer in, black to black in, black to black out, green, 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 and white to white. If you can avoid cutting the white wire, don't cut it. You don't have to bring it in. Your dimmer will only come with three caps, so make sure you have a spare cap um, or don't cut the white wire, either one of those. When you turn this new handy dandy thing on, you will be able to dim light switches, anything with a temperature control such as this. Uh, if you want your toaster to be like really jacked up, you could plug it in there too. If you have a drill, you can actually plug in a drill and make it variable. <laughs> Anything that you want that you want to need variable power will now come from the strip. Even my LED on the strip is now variable. I can make it a half power LED. We're at 3 minutes and 45 seconds. Y'all stay freaking awesome.